More than a quarter of Premiership footballers today are black, earning fortunes and being adored by fans. But when the game began, it was almost exclusively white. A hundred years ago, he was one of the first black professional players, and he was playing at the very highest level. You would think that alone would be enough to guarantee him a place in history. But not only was he a footballing hero, he also became an officer in the British Army, an army that referred to black people as woolly-headed niggers in official correspondence. His name was Walter Daniel Tull. Well, I first came across Walter Tull by accident, actually. Um, I was at White Hot Lane. We'd finished training, and I found myself in the Oak Room, adjacent to the boardroom. And in those days, in the early 80s, they had pictures, you know, pictures going from the 60s right through to the 1900s. And I would, I found myself looking at these pictures, and I found myself looking at a picture that dated back to 1909. And seen a young black lad, a very handsome looking lad, in a typical team photo, legs crossed, arms folded, hair parted in the middle. I thought, who the hell is he? Spoke to the Tottenham historian. He'd, he'd never heard of him. I was researching the history of black footballers in Britain. Came across uh, in a, an encyclopedia by Maurice Goldsworthy, written in the 60s, I think, and it had just a couple of lines, really, about D. Tull, not, not W. D. Tull, um, Tottenham Hotspur, and thinking, well, how come this guy played for Spurs, such a big club, and he, he hadn't been remembered? The more I found out about his life, every tiny piece of information, every scrap of detail captivated me, really, and I thought, how come he's been forgotten, this guy? It's important to keep the legacy alive, you know, to keep refreshing people's minds of the great story. Uh, you know, I've been aware of the, the of Walter Toll from, from a very young age, uh, since joining the club, and, you know, it's great to see his, his pictures that they remain at Wa'a Hale, uh, you know, and it's important to, to, to let youngsters know about him and, uh, you know, obviously going to, to the World War I and, uh, and, and fighting there and, you know, obviously losing, losing his life there, you know, fighting for, for, for something that he believed in. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an inspirational story and I think that everyone should, should, should get to know about the story, uh, you know, of a great man. It's, it's truly uh, remarkable. I joined Manchester United in 1968 as an, as, a, as an apprentice professional. But I joined the club the year that they won their first European Cup, which was an amazing experience because those icons that you can see behind me were at their peak, you know, best Lord Charlton. And I, the day I first signed professional, uh, apprentice professional forms for Manchester United, it, I'd signed and I was sitting in the stands with um, my carers because I was in care, which is a connection and a parallel with, with obviously Walter's life. And the chief children's officer from Manchester came uh, on the day. I'd never met him before or since. And, and they, were, they were high times for me at the club. Of course, I had my lows. In those days, you just sort of got on with it. You accepted that some of the, quite a lot of the racist stuff as being part and parcel of, of your experience. It wasn't something that you really consciously thought about. You just sort of took it on the chin. One particular occasion, I was in the youth team playing at Rotherham, as it happens, and I went to take a corner. <laughs> A, a corner on the far side of the pitch and some guy shouts out that I should get up back, back up the chimney where I belong. So all of that sort of stuff was going on um, and I suppose um, at that particular time you were on your own so you just got on with it and you had to have the bravery and the strength of character to deal with it. It wasn't right of course but at that particular time for me there wasn't a lot you could do about it. I can't begin to imagine what it must have been like for somebody like Walter Tull and the fact that, that there were probably very, very few black people in, in England anyway. But to break into, into professional football, and I know Walter travelled to South America with, um, with Spurs, and, and, I, and I think about that, I think of what, what, what strength of character that he must have had, because if I thought I had a bad experience, heaven knows what his experience must have been like. And it was very, it's very humbling for me now, speaking now, uh, all, these years, all these years later after playing and also being a coach, Thinking back to, to those days and trying to, get my, trying to get my head around what it must have been like for him uh, when society in general was mainly white with, without maybe a community of people for him to, to be gathered around. Um, only very few black people. So for him to not only 
to, to play professional football, but also to have the achievements that he had, you know, his military achievements, is quite extraordinary. When I think of Walter Tull, I think about the word pioneer that's often used, and he certainly was one. So you look at that, and then you, you think about other pioneers in other fields, um, people like um, Gagarin, you know, the first man in space, and Neil Armstrong, and before that, um, black icons like Jackie Robinson in the States, the baseball, and Jesse Owens, and, and, and more recently, people like Usain Bolt. So um, if, you think about, if you think about that, and you think about his achievements at that time, not only in terms of, of playing professionally, playing, for, playing professional football in the context of his race, but also his military achievements, and the first black officer, uh, officer in the army, he, the fact that yeah, he, he was commended for a military medal. Um, th these are huge achievements and so a true, a true hero. And hopefully at some point in time the, a mid the military medal will be accorded to him because, because he's earned it uh, on the field of battle. Um, and I think he fought two grounds. He fought the racist ground and he fought on the physical grounds of, of Flanders and, and gave his life. So a true hero. And the very reason why this film should be supported by everybody, because he was, it's a wonderful story. It was a great pleasure for me in life to discover Walter Tull as someone who made a huge contribution to football as a black man and to this country uh, as a military serviceman. I grew up in Britain in South London and as a boy experienced a tremendous amount of discrimination and racism and one of the things that always inhibited my understanding of race relations and inequality was the fact that there was never any signs or indications as part of our education that black and ethnic minority people made a contribution to the development of British society. Playing as the only black person in an all-white team, you had to put up with a lot of atrocities and indignities. Going through the experiences of discrimination, racism, rejection, exclusion, all these things happened and Walter Tull achieved what he achieved. And to serve with such great dignity, courage, uh, and to be recognised as a hero, and yet to be written out of history, denied us all the opportunity in our learning. And it's important now that here we are in the 21st century, that we're providing information to the next generation so that they can understand, they can have that knowledge, they can be inspired that black people and people from all backgrounds have made a great contribution to the more important that we go on seeing people like Walter Tull as inspiration. Walter Tull has become a modern day hero for me. It's very timely in my view that we should see a film of someone like Walter Tull, the way he overcame every obstacle that was put in his way to be someone who was loved by his fellow servicemen in the armed services and having not had the opportunity to see and know about Walter Tull for all these years it will be a great tribute not only to him but to all those who we've denied the opportunity to get exposure and have an understanding of their contribution it is most opportune moment for us to elevate Walter Tull to where he should be, one of our heroes uh, to revere, to appreciate uh, and to enable us to emulate. Hello, I am Sir Tony Hawkhead and I am the Chief Executive of Action for Children. Action for Children is the national UK charity that looks after around 300,000 children young people and families and carers. We were set up in 1869 by our founder, Thomas Bowman Stevenson, to help neglected, beaten, abandoned children. Action for Children has taken that Stevenson belief and made it part of our DNA. At about 20 years after he set that home up, a young man called Walter Tull, with his brother, was taken into care there to be looked after. We're incredibly proud of Walter for the extraordinary person he became as a result of the support we could give him. 
He went on to become one of the very first black officers in the British Army, a war hero. He played professional football at the highest level. He was a great role model, not only for uh, black people everywhere, but also for children who'd been through very, very tough times where they had lost their parents. He's an extraordinary story, colorful, interesting, vibrant, exciting. I think it's fantastic that people are thinking about the chance to make a film of what is truly a wonderful story. One of the most exciting things about the film project is that if the film makes significant money, some of that money will come back to the services of Action for Children. So if we can carry on doing the work that we've been doing for the past 146 years.